we're going to consider the relationship of the concept of instant center or instantaneous center of rotation to mobile robot kinematics. So first we'll cover planar velocity as a rotation about a point. This brings up the idea of instantaneous center of rotation and we'll use this to look at a geometric interpretation of the no sliding constraint for wheels and wrap this up with a couple of examples. The idea that we're going to start with is that all planar velocities, so that's x dot, y dot, and theta dot, are equivalent to rotation about a point. This point is called the instantaneous center of rotation, or the instant center. We already know that the velocity of a rigid body is fully described by its angular velocity and the velocity of one point on the body, so we'll call that point A. The instant center concept says that it's equivalently described, at least in the plane, by angular velocity mm, omega. So in the plane, the direction is always perpendicular to the plane. So really, really, that could be a scalar. And the location of the center of rotation. So that center of rotation doesn't necessarily have to be on the body. It's just a point where if the body were extended, uh, that point would have zero velocity. Here is a drawing that shows this concept relating the instant center to the velocity of point A. The velocity at A is described by the rate of rotation, omega, and the position vector 2A from the instant center, point C. So we have the scalar, the magnitude of angular velocity, the length of the position vector, multiply that and that gives us the magnitude of VA, and then the direction comes from the cross product omega hat cross L 2A from C hat. The hat indicates that these are unit vectors. So the cross product here gives the direction. That's saying that L 2A from C has to be perpendicular to VA. And the speed of VA coupled with the magnitude of omega gives us the length uh, from um, A to C. So we want to prove that any planar velocity can be described as rotation about a point. If we're given an instant center, C, and we're talking about two points on the body, A and B, then the velocity of A is equal to the cross product omega and L 2A from that point C. So we're going to start off saying that C, that the velocity of A is equivalent to a rotation about a point C, and we want to show that the velocity of any point on the body is also equivalent to a rotation about this point. So we know that velocity of B can be described in terms of VA and omega, like this. And then we just substitute the expression we had for V sub A into that equation. So now we have omega cross L to A from C plus omega cross L to B from A. The cross product is distributive. so we can rewrite that equation where we have a sum of the position vectors and those two position vectors are just the same as the, the vector 2b from point c. So this says that the, that the velocity of any point on the body is given is a rotation about the instant center point c. So now we'll use this to look geometrically at the no sliding constraint. Here we have our rigid body, and its velocity is equivalent to rotation about some point, an instant center. Now we know from the no sliding constraint that the velocity of a point on the wheel has to be perpendicular to the wheel's axis. And we looked at before the velocity of a point is perpendicular to the vector to that point from the instant center. So that means that the instant center is somewhere on the wheel axis. Now if we have multiple wheels, then the point where they intersect is the location of the instant center. If we have a case where there's no angular velocity, so pure translation, that just means that C is at infinity. So if these axes are parallel, then they intersect at infinity and omega is zero. Another wheel configuration is the differential drive robot. Here the wheel axes are coincident, 
and the instant center is there, therefore anywhere on that line. The distance from the origin or the robot origin along that line to the instant center is given by the wheel speeds or sure is given by the wheel speed so it's determined by the velocity of the origin in the x direction and the angular velocity. The velocity of the origin in the y direction is always zero because um, the velocity is going to be perpendicular to the wheel axis or perpendicular to the y axis in this case. The last example is the synchro drive configuration. Again, there are three wheels but only two motors. One motor steers all the wheels at the same rate, so the wheels are always parallel, their wheel planes are always parallel. And then the other motor drives all the wheels at the same rate, so all the wheel speeds are the same. So what we saw from the geometrical interpretation, if all these wheel axes are parallel, then that means they're that this robot can only move, have pure translation. So that's going to be per pure translation perpendicular to the wheel axes according to what we saw from the velocity of a point, the direction of the velocity of a point relative to the direction of the position vector to that point from the instant center. The translation is going to be perpendicular to the wheel axes and in other words parallel to the wheel planes. So for this configuration here, the velocity is always going to be in the y direction. And pure translation means that theta dot or omega is always going to be zero for the synchro drive robot. So there's no way to reorient the chassis for this configuration. And this result is identical to what one would find using the no sliding constraint equation. So looking at, at it from that perspective. Here is the constraint, the no sliding constraint matrix for this robot. So we had three steerable standard wheels. We'll call this wheel one, wheel two, and wheel three. And plug in the values for alpha and beta that we get from this figure. And we end up with this for our no sliding constraint matrix. Now, the velocities for the robot chassis that satisfy the no sliding constraint. So if all the velocities that when multiplied by this matrix give you zero, mm, those velocities make up the null space of this matrix. So if we want to find the permissible velocities, like we did here geometrically, if we want to find the permissible velocities from this matrix, we just need to find the null space. So the null space of this matrix, we can use elimination and see that it's equivalent to the null space of this matrix. And that's just 0, 1, 0. So any vector that's a multiple of this one is going to satisfy the no sliding constraints. So that means that x dot is equal to theta dot is equal to 0, which is equivalent to what we found here from the geometrical interpretation where we had pure translation perpendicular to the wheel axes.